Morning, everybody. Man, it's so good to be with you. I uh, mentioned I'm a priest of the Diocese of Pittsburgh and uh, just had a, an assignment change. I've had a bunch of assignments. There's a lot, of, a lot of changes going on in Pittsburgh, so I've had four different assignments in the past past six years, and I was, uh, my last assignment, I was pastor of three parishes, and it was just awesome. Like, we were, we were kind of growing during COVID. We were, we were booming. Our doors were open. There was a lot of really great things going on, and so I, I said bye to, uh, I was sa- celebrating my last masses, saying bye to them, moving to my new place, uh, I guess about three weeks ago now, and I'll tell you this because it's funny, and I was preaching, and you know, people are crying, and it's like really sad. It was the first time I was a pastor, so I was there for one year, and just a lot of really, a lot of really beautiful things happened, and I was preaching and preaching. I was talking about like heaven, trying to give them a word of consolation, like in heaven, like we'll all be together. Like if we just conform our lives to Jesus on earth, like we'll all go to heaven where there will be no transfers, right? And instead of saying that, I said, and, and if we just conform our lives to Jesus, like, we'll go to heaven where there are no bishops, you know? <laughs> and people literally started clapping. I was like, no, 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 no. Like, this is being live streamed. Do not clap. They got louder. I'm like, that's what, no, no, no. It's like a little Freudian slip right there. So <laughs> this is what, g- <laughs> the bishop's like, oh, really? You know, <laughs> you're now the chaplain to the, you know. I, I find the first reading so encouraging. Like at the birth of Moses, right? We know that Jesus Christ is the new Moses, right? But uh, I just find both of these births, the old Moses and the new Moses, to be so incredibly encouraging. And I, I find them to be so encouraging because they're so kind of wild. They happen in such difficult, strange, challenging, brutal circumstances, you know? Like sometimes the voice of discouragement in our lives can be so loud that it drowns out the voice of encouragement. You guys know this especially in ministry. Like the voice of the devil is always the voice of discouragement. The voice of God is always the voice of encouragement. And so much of our lives are dictated. Our happiness, our joy, our fruitfulness in ministry is determined by what voices we're listening to. Amen? It's like I find in in the confessions that I'm hearing so often, like that guy just went to confession to me. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) And uh, I, I just find like, the devil's getting us with anger right now and a sense of a need for justice, right? But it's, it's beautiful. Like the gospel teaches us this justice is mine, says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. That's what the Lord says. So I don't have to be the one to administer the justice. Amen? Like that's up to God so I can let go. But back to the first reading. This is how the birth of Moses came about. And that's how the gospel of Matthew starts with the birth of Jesus. How did it come about? Well, yesterday we heard that a a king arose in Egypt who knew not Joseph, right? And what does the king do? He starts getting really suspicious. And he starts getting afraid. Fear is the root of all sins. Bishop Barron says, the opposite of love is not hate. It's fear. Hate is the root of fear. So he becomes afraid and he gets all the people to become very afraid. And so they start to oppress the Israelites, right? And they start to oppress them and then they enslave them. And then they go like a step further. It ends by saying that Pharaoh commanded that all the midwives would take every male baby that was born and throw the children into the river. See, this is why it's so helpful to have series like The Chosen or Mel Gibson's The Passion. Because so often we go through these readings like, oh, okay. But imagine, this is the circumstances where the Savior of the Israelites who's going to deliver them from slavery and bring them into the promised land was born. So two Levites get together, Moses' parents, right? And they they can see this child. And can you imagine? They can see the baby's born. It's a boy, the mom. Mothers, come on. You you can relate to this father, but we all can relate to it. So Moses is born. She has to hide him for three months. Can you imagine the terror? Every cry, oh, please, quiet her, right? If you guys have seen The Quiet Place, right? Remember when she's like giving birth, she's trying not to scream. She's holding on. To, this is what it would have been like. Like, they find this child. They're going to kill my boy. They're going to kill my baby boy. And so she's hiding him for three months, and then she realizes she can't hide him any longer. So she does this, mothers, come on. She takes him, makes this basket out of papyrus, puts bitumen, pitch in it, puts him in the water, and leaves him. And his sister can't abide it, right? She's staying by, and Pharaoh's daughter comes to him. Do you want somebody to nurse it for you? Yeah, this is God's providence. Do you see? God is not asleep, amen? He's not asleep. He's working in all of this. Yeah, he'll take the child and nurse him. But then he gets older and he's got to give the child back, right? 
This is how the birth of Moses, this is how the salvation of the Israelites was worked out in the providential plan of God, in the messiness, in the muck, in the... Now fast forward to the new Moses. I love one of my favorite lines in Scripture is that exactly. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about, and then all hell breaks loose. Like, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. Everything worked out perfectly. They had the perfect bishop at the perfect time and the perfect pastoral council and the perfect, you know, it's like, no! It's like, that's not how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. They were betrothed, but before they lived together, Mary's found with child. Joseph, he decides to divorce her quietly. He's a just man. He's about to divorce her quietly. An angel appears to them. Can you imagine the consternation? Mary, Joseph, how am I going to tell you? All these... Decides not to divorce. Go, angel of the Lord appears. Do not be afraid. He, okay, he's not afraid. Takes Mary and his wife. Now they call a census. Really, a census? Like, this is horrible timing. <laughs> and now we're on our way to Bethlehem. She's nine months pregnant. I've her on my donkey. Like, this is not good, right? Really? You met Joseph. Like, come on. Did you remember he's God? Like, remember that part? Couldn't you make it a little smoother? Don't we do that? Father Jacques Philippe says, we have to stop. Imagining that the life of earth is the life of heaven, where there's no trials and no tribulations and no challenges. We keep pining after that. That's the life of heaven, not the life of earth. It's the life of heaven. We're on a journey, you know that. The word perish comes from the word parochia. It means pilgrims on a journey. We're not home yet, amen? And so Joseph and Mary are now in Bethlehem, and now what happens? Oh, now finally it works out great. Everything's okay. Uh, Herod is searching for the child to destroy it. Take him to Egypt. Come again? Like, what, what, like, okay, so now we're on our way to Egypt, and guess what they hear about? The massacre of the innocents. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ comes about. I'm reciting these stories to you because I think it should be tremendous courage for you. Again, the voice of discouragement can be so loud. Look at the circumstances. Look at the world. We don't know if a man is a man or a woman is a woman anymore. Everything that's going on, 70% of Catholics not coming to church, you know, or not believing the true presence of you. Like, you guys know all the stats better than I know the stats. It's so easy to become discouraged. Let me just talk about your personal lives for a second. I mean, maybe you are in that. I mean, your marriage isn't quite what you, and your kids, they're not practicing the faith. And I'm a DRE, and how are my kids not being, huh? And my, well, one child is, is same-sex attraction, and I don't know what to do with it. And the other kids, and the parents, and the, what's going on in your own heart? I just want to say to you, like, he hasn't forgotten you. You've been remembered. And that's why I love the good thief on the cross. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. To be remembered is to be remembered. It means to be put back together. I want you today to remember that you have been remembered. All he does all day long is remember you. Just remembering you. This is what God's doing with you right now. Yeah. You're like, hi, God. He's like, hey, <laughs> hey, guys. You know? That's why these little kids are so cute. I was saying bye. I have a youth camp. I jumped on the bus to say bye to the kids real quick, and I jumped off. And they said, Father Joe, you have to stay with us. You have to stay with us. They said, we're your biggest fans. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll stay. You know? <laughs> Me and a bunch of little kids on a bus. He's not asleep in your personal lives. He's with you. He loves you. Let's just talk about your ministry. He's with you there too. It's like you know C.S. Lewis Chronicles of Narnia. Aslan is on the move. Aslan is on the move. There is no reason for us to be discouraged. But look at all the circumstances. I know the circumstances. Did you not hear Moses? Did you not hear how the birth of Jesus Christ came about? The birth of Jesus Christ comes about and the birth of the new Moses, that is the saving of the Israelites, comes about in the midst of the muck and the difficulty and the challenges of life. You guys know the oyster and the pearl thing. Sand gets in the oyster and it irritates the oyster and that's how the pearl is born. I loved our responsorial psalm. It said, Lord, I'm in the abysmal swamp. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's a great prayer. I was driving down here. I was like thinking about my circumstances. I'm like, Lord, I am in the abysmal swamp. <laughs> Pull me out of the swamp, Lord. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. 
Every hour I need you. My one defense, my right. Oh, God, how I need you. And we call on the name of Jesus, right? Jesus. And what does he say in response? Joseph, Thomas, Sally. He's calling your name this morning. I want your heart to rise, to be encouraged. I am working in your life personally, and I am working in your ministry. So our response to that has to be, I will trust him. Even when it looks dark, even when I'm taking my baby and hiding it in the water, Job says this, though he should kill me, I would still trust him. Let's let our hearts be firmum est cormeum. My heart is firm, Lord, in his trust for you. If we do that, we stay faithful, we stay humble like Joseph, like Mary, like Moses most of the time, although he just murdered somebody today. <laughs> but God's still working, amen? He used a murder to liberate Israel. We stay humble, we stay faithful. God will bear great fruit in our lives, in the lives of our families, in our ministries, amen?